Hi, I'm Joe Crabtree, and in this lesson I want to talk about a concept that I call motion displacement. So what we're going to do is take an exercise that I like to work on um, on the hi-hat with the bass drum, and it's a double stroke roll exercise, and we're basically going to take the four different inversions of a double stroke roll and cycle through them while keeping the bass drum on quarter notes. We're going to play a bar of each inversion. So the first one is right, right, left, left. So I'll play that between the snare drum and the hi-hat so you can hear how it sounds. And then the second one is going to be right, left, left, right, repeated. So the switch is going to be right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. And then we go into left, left, right, right. And then that will go into left, right, right, left. And then we'll go back to the beginning. So I'll play it um, at an eighth note rate to a click between the hi-hat and the snare drum and I'll put on the screen what I'm playing and then you can follow along. Okay, so that was eighth notes, and the idea is to play this exercise at sixteenth note rate. So I'll keep the bass drum playing quarter notes, and that would sound like this. Now I personally find the inverted ones more difficult to play than the regular ones because you're lining up the bass drum with the second note of the double and also the left hand lead version is harder um, lining up the bass drum with the left hand. But what I want to talk about is the actual mechanics behind doing this because we think mostly about playing with wrists and fingers and forearms and upper arms kind of get left out of the equation. But really you want all of these things to be in sync so if there's any upper arm motion going on you want it to be the same for the regular doubles as for the inverted doubles to get the same kind of sound so if you think about it when you're playing a regular double stroke if you're going right right left left right right left left then your forearms are probably playing right left right left right right left left right right left left okay now what happens when we switch to the inverted doubles is that it's quite common for this forearm motion to stay the same and then weird things have to happen with the hands because if you think about it the inverted double stroke roll is the same as the regular double stroke roll but starting in a different place but the motion should be the same so we want to displace the motion of the regular doubles to the inverted position the motion for the eighth notes is going to be like this one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a so we've got the left hand on the E and the right hand on the A, and then it's going to go to one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a. So we've got to get used to the forearms moving down on the E's and the A's. So eighth notes, we're going to have one and two and three and four and one E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, one and two and three and four and one e a e and this is pretty tricky to play and the key here is that you want them to feel free you want the ones that are on the ones and the ands to feel just the same as the ones that are on the E's and the A's. We're trying to displace the whole motion. Now, this gets more difficult when you add the bass drum, because you're playing the bass drum with the right hand. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. And then we get to one, E, A, two, E, A. So now you've got the kick on the one, the left hand on the E, and the right hand on the A. So that is more difficult to play. So 
So I'm trying to kind of play full strokes here and have the stick and the whole arm come back up. Um, but basically that's something that you're going to have to work on. And then the same the other way around. So let me work through the whole exercise with the bass drum. I'm going to play it um, just the eighth note part. So not doubles, just the first part of the double stroke. Okay, so basically work on that motion and then when you bring the doubles back in, still think about this eighth knot motion of the forearms. Okay, so um, I'm going to do my best effort to play this at 100 BPM on the hi-hat with the kick and you'll hear it go out. It's very easy to hear when the things don't line up properly or when the timing shifts a little bit. In the next lesson, I'll talk about ways to improve the timing. Um, but I'll start with eighth notes and then I'll go into the sixteenth notes so you can see what the whole exercise should sound like. So that's the basic idea, and I'm sure if you work on this, you'll find this ability to move the larger parts of your limbs against each other, and basically in syncopated rhythms, I'm sure you will find that useful in uh, various grooves that you get to play. So like I say, in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you another tip to help synchronize parts of double strokes with the bass drum or your left foot if you're doing that. Um, if you like this lesson and you wanna check out some more of what I do, then head over to www.joecrabtree.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Before you has turned the wing nut so tight that you just can't unscrew it. Um, the way I used to deal with this, if I, just, if I couldn't do it with my fingers, I would get a stick and I would bash the edge. And then I wanna play the same thing, but with the bell every third sixteenth. The lead hand in each of those is playing a shuffle sound, okay? So if I take out the hand that doesn't land on the click, then you'll hear that we get a shuffle, which is the first and third partial of a triplet.